In this lesson, we're going to go over some precautions, cover building the CE6000, and then set up the computer and plotter so they are communicating with each other. Let's go over some general precautions. First, try to get someone to help you, especially if you are installing the CE6120, the larger unit. A second person will make assembly much easier. Also, when placing the cutter, make sure it's in a dust-free and dry environment and won't be in direct sunlight. Make sure there's a rated power outlet near its location that is grounded properly. It's best to make sure there's enough room around the device of at least two feet. It just makes it easier when you're loading material onto the cutter. It also allows rolls of material to move freely without running into obstacles. Here are some precautions to follow when maintaining the product. First, don't clean with solvents. Use a dry cloth or a cloth that has been dampened with a neutral detergent that has been diluted with water. Don't use oil to lubricate any of the parts. If something goes wrong, don't try to repair the unit. Contact your dealer first or contact GraphTech. Here are some precautions when using the product. First, handle the blades with care. They're small and they're easy to lose and very sharp. When setting the blade depth, oftentimes there's a temptation to extend it beyond what is necessary. When overextending the blade, what can often happen is it will cut through the backing of the material and can damage the Teflon mat. How to install the blade will be covered later in this lesson. As with any piece of machinery, don't get too close to the moving parts. Inevitably, something will get torn, pulled, or struck. Next, we will be building the stand. So if you have purchased the CE6040, you are welcome to skip ahead to the next section, since that unit doesn't come with a stand. Although, once your cutter is in its final location, go ahead and place the two stock roller trays to the back of the cutter, as shown here. First, let's unbox all the parts and pieces to the stand and keep the cutter boxed for now. Lay each piece of the stand out on the carpeted ground to prevent scratches. Let's identify the different components. There are the two stand legs, the two footers, the center cross member bar, two stock roller plates, two media stock rollers, two stock roller stops, and if you own a CE6120, there will be an added alignment bar. There should be 12 M5 socket head cap screws and four coin screws. Both the CE6060 and the CE6120 have a similar process to building the stand. So we will cover building the CE6060 and then we will show briefly how to install the alignment bar to the CE6120. First, mount both stand legs to the cross member using four M5 socket head screws. As you mount the cross member to each stand leg, take note not to tighten the screws. We will tighten them after we place the cutter on the stand and it has been properly seated. Next, mount the footer to the bottom of each stand leg. When mounting the footers, take note that the footers don't mount evenly. This is normal. In fact, the longer end of the footers should be toward the back of the cutter. This will be important to remember when installing the media stalker plates. Next, we can mount the media stalker plates to the top of the left and right stand legs. Mount the media stalkers so that the stock roller bearings are facing toward the back. You'll be able to identify this by looking at the stand footer. The longer stem of the footer will indicate the back end of the cutter. Mount the media stalker plates with two socket head cap screws using the provided Allen wrench. In this case, be sure to go ahead and tighten the screws. If you have the CE6120, go ahead and mount the media alignment bar with the two socket head cap screws, one at each end.
Place the CE6000 onto the stand so that the positioning pins match up with the holes on the CE6000. And then fasten with the four coin screws. At this point, tighten the four socket head cap screws using the provided Allen wrench. Place the media stock rollers on the stock roller bearings. Next, plug in the power cord to the right side of the cutter and then plug it into the wall power outlet. Keep it turned off for right now. Next, take the blade holder out of the box. Hold it in your hand and remove the cap. Now locate the CB09U blade, which is packed in a plastic container. Remove the blade and insert it into the blade holder cap, inserting the blade tip first. Carefully press the blade into the cap to ensure that it is seated properly. Then carefully mount the cap onto the blade holder. As mentioned earlier, the blade should only extend to the thickness of the media. This may seem to be a daunting task, but it's not really. To extend the blade, start by turning the adjustment knob clockwise until the blade is barely sticking out, barely visible. Next, take a piece of vinyl and lay it flat on a table. Then with the blade holder tool in your hand, draw a circle on the vinyl. Go ahead and remove the circle. If it is difficult to remove, then extend the blade by turning the blue adjustment knob one quarter of an inch clockwise and repeat the test. Next, reach on the back side of the media or vinyl and with your hand try to push up from the back side of the vinyl underneath the cut circle. If it pops out easily, then the blade is extended too far. Retract the blade by turning the blue adjustment knob one quarter of an inch counterclockwise and repeat the test. Once the blade is installed and adjusted, mount it onto the tool carriage. Loosen the tool carriage screw, making sure the little C-clamp is out of the way. Then take the blade holder and insert it onto the tool carriage mount. And then push the blade holder all the way down until the rim is completely seated and is under the C-clamp. Tighten the tool carriage screw, making sure that the C-clamp is above the rim of the blade holder. Before we go any further, let's get familiar with the CE6000 cutter. Starting at the front, on the right-hand side, is the control panel. We'll go over this in greater detail later, but this is where we can control the different functions of the cutter. On the left side of the control panel, down towards the middle, is where the media is loaded and cut. On the top side of that area are the push rollers. There will be two outside push rollers, and for the CE6120, there will be a center push roller as well. Their purpose is to push down on the vinyl material to hold it in place while it is being cut. These can be repositioned according to the size of the material. Just below the push rollers are the grit rollers. When the push rollers are lowered, the grit rollers are what drive the material back and forth. This means that in order for the media to move during the cutting operation, the push rollers have to be directly over the grit rollers. Just behind the control panel is the media set lever. This lever will raise and lower the push rollers onto the grit rollers. The push rollers have to be in a raised position before any media can be loaded. At the back end of the cutter are the media stock rollers. This is where you place your rolls of media or material. These two little stoppers that we talked about when we were building the stand are there to ensure that the roll of media doesn't drift from side to side when the media is being pulled off the roll. The CE6120 has this alignment bar in the front that will help you load the media straight into the cutter. Finally, on top of the unit, there's a channel that's very handy. It's where you can place all your tools, your X-Acto knives, cutting tools if you have more than one, scissors, and other tools. Let's 
start by turning on the power and configuring the cutter to connect with the computer. A new unit out of the box first asks you what language to operate the cutter, English, Spanish, etc. Select the language first. The control panel should be indicating that before we go on, we need to load the media. If you have a roll, place it on the media stock rollers in the back. Unlatch the wheel by moving the media latch backwards and down. This action will raise the push rollers. Take the front edge and place it through the back slot and advance it through the front. Once the media is inserted into the cutter, move the push rollers to each side of the media. Their location is not that important except that they need to be directly over the grit rollers. Use these blue strips to locate the grit rollers. This next step is an important step when trying to align a roll. Take the front edge of the media with one hand and hold the roll in the back with the other. While holding the roll, pull the front edge to make the media taut. This helps the media to be straight. If you have a sheet of media, align the sheet by using the ribs found on the front panel of the cutter. Once the media is straight, hold it against the front panel to keep it in place and set the media set lever. Once the media set lever is up and the push rollers are down, the control panel display will show three options, roll one, roll two, and sheet. These options will be explained later, so for right now, let's select roll two. The cutter will start to initialize by first locating the push rollers. After the initialization, the tool carriage will be parked in the home position which is on the right-hand side of the cut area near the control panel. The control panel will then show that it is in ready mode. Next is to set up the cutter's settings so that it will communicate with the computer. First, make sure that the cutter's menu structure is in simple mode. You'll know that you are in simple mode because the little indicator light will be turned on. We'll be discussing this in another lesson, but suffice to say, the simple mode will remove menu options that are generally not necessary, keeping the menu simple. First is to set the unit of measurement to inches. The way this is done is we first press the pause menu key. This will set the cutter in a pause mode so that we can adjust some of the cutter settings. On the screen, there are three menu choices, media, interface represented by the I slash F, and then advanced. Right now, we need to set the links unit so that they reflect inches rather than metric. To do this, let's press the 3 key to select the advanced options. Next is to press the 2 key for length unit. Press the 2 key to work in inches. And then press enter to accept the change. And then press the left arrow key. This brings us back to the main menu. Next is to press the 1 key for media, and then press the 1 key for page length. To increase the length, we'll press the up arrow key and set the value to about 1200 inches. This will give us about 100 feet in length to work with. This is somewhat a slow process to get to such a high value. By pressing the fast key first, we can set the increments to a higher value. In this case, we can press it until we can reach 400 inch increments. Now when we press the up arrow key, we can reach the 1200 inch value more rapidly. Once the value is set to where we want, in this case 1200 inches, press enter to accept the value. Next is the resolution for the cutter that must be set, or what is called the step size. To do this, press the 2 key for interface, and then press the 2 key again for GPGL step size. Finally, press the 3 key to set the step size to 1016. Press Enter to accept the new changes. And then press the left arrow key to return to the main menu. Now that the plotter is set up to communicate with the cutter, let's turn the cutter off. Take the USB cable that came with the cutter and plug one end into the computer and the other end into the plotter. But do not turn the cutter back on and go ahead and take the cutting tool out of the tool carriage for right now.
Next, we'll install the GraphTech software. We won't install all of it, since we'll cover this in later lessons. To start, insert the CE6000 DVD into the DVD drive. Click Run Multi Setup. You may get this user account control message asking if it's okay to install the multi setup application. Click Yes. This will open the CE6000 software installation application. As mentioned before, we will be going over the Studio and Cutting Master 3 software in another lesson. Therefore, for right now, click on the Install CE6000 Software button and follow the step-by-step -step process. At this point, the installation program is asking if you'd like to install the CE6000 driver. Click OK. Click Next. And Next again. This will bring up this window that will ask what port you will be using to communicate to the cutter. Choose the port you'll be using. In our case, we will be using the USB port. And then click Next. Once the driver is installed, click OK. This will bring us back to the main menu. Click Exit. Finally, turn the cutter on. Initialize the cutter by pressing the 2 key for Roll 2 on the control panel. The cutter has been set up and the software is installed. The final step is to test the communications by using the plotter controller to set a test cut. To open the plotter controller, click Start at the bottom of your PC window, then click All Programs. Scroll down the list to find GraphTech Cutting Plotter Controller for CE6000. Click on the folder, and then click on the application. This will start the Cutting Plotter Controller, or Controller for short. When the Plotter Controller window opens, click the Test Cut button, and then click OK. At this point, your cutter should be cutting. Go ahead and mount the blade holder tool. If there is no movement, then there are a couple of things you can check. First, make sure that the cutter is turned on and is in ready mode. Next, check the cable to make sure it is plugged in correctly to both the cutter and the computer. If it still doesn't work for some reason, review the steps we have just covered to make sure a step wasn't missed. If you still have issues, contact your dealer where you bought the cutter or contact GraphTech's Technical Support Department at 888-318-3247.